Hello and welcome to the third Haskell tutorial in this series. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about types. Um, so just to tell you, I've just launched GHCI with a blank main file. Um, this time it is seriously blank. Um, doesn't matter so much. Um, so types, I think I will actually go into the uh, file for this. So there's three ways to define types in Haskell. Um, we're going to cover two of them in this tutorial. Um, the first is the simplest, type. Um, type just makes type aliases. So I could say type ID equals int. And that's going to mean that I could define a function that is int ID to ID. I, I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know, map. IDs. Um, and it's a lot easier to sort of understand what that function does because I've given it ID in its type name. Um, so an example would be, um, maybe another example might be I could call it a name and that could equal string. Um, and then type date of birth. Um, equals and then a tuple int 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 and then I could maybe write type find date of birth and that would be of type name to date of birth. So you can see quite clearly that exactly what that function will do um, from the types. So that, that's the first way of defining types. Um, the next way, the more interesting way, is sort of building types from scratch. And to do that, we use the data keyword in Haskell. Now, you know, what is a type in Haskell? Well, Haskell has both product types and co-product types, or some types, as they're sometimes called. Um, so it's, it's almost like type logic if you like, um, co-product types. Um, and you use this to describe what something is. That's how you think about types. What is something? Um, so for example, a list, say I wanted to redefine list in Haskell, I'd say data list equals, say it's just a list of integers for now. It's either empty or it's cons, remember? That's the join keyword, int to list. And uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, that is a perfectly fine Haskell data type there. Um, so I could go, what is the type of empty? It's a list. What is the type of um, cons uh, one cons to empty, that's a list. Um, that's the list one, two, a linked list. Um, so you really think about what things are when you're defining types in Haskell. Um, now, that's not a very good list. It only deals with integers. So in Haskell, we can add type parameters for parametric polymorphism. So if I say list A, lowercase a, that allows me to sort of parameterize my type. So I say, it's not just a list of integers now, it's a list of type A. And you can see I adjusted the type definition accordingly. So now, um, oh, and of course I forgot to pass that back, list of type A. Perfect. So now I could go, okay, what is the type of um, same one as before. So now that's a list of type A where A is a number. We're gonna deal with this syntax later. Maybe a more sort of clear cut one would be if I had A and B. Now it's a list of characters. Notice that that definition is recursive. I, I mentioned list A in the definition of list A. That's perfectly fine in Haskell, it's done very often when describing tree-like structures, maybe, 
or anything. Um, cool. Um, so the next thing is how do we use these types? So let's make let's make something that converts a list of the type we've made there to a normal Haskell list. So we'll say to h list Haskell list, and it's going to be of type list a to and then the Haskell version of list to h list, and now pattern matching. These constructors, and they are constructors, um, we can kind of extract data from them when we define functions. So I'm going to say to h list empty equals, and then the Haskell empty list. To h list, and then in brackets, cons x x's equals, and I need to align these things or else I suffer, is going to equal x cons x's in Haskell format. Now, this is interesting that I've done it like this. Um, like this, sorry. This x's is matching this. Oh, whoops. And that x is matching that in the type. And that's it. We, we kind of decompose types like that. Um, oh, of course. So x is, is not of the right type. I forgot I need to recursively call hlist. There we go. Now it works. So I can go take that and I can say to hlist and then uh, dollar and we have the Haskell list equivalent. Um, that dollar, by the way, is to avoid writing brackets. So if I took that dollar away, the way Haskell would read this, you'll see it's going to error, is it goes to list. OK, that takes in a list. Next thing, cons. But that's not a list. That's a constructor. That's a function in Haskell. So it errors. It was expecting a list. It got a function. And it, um, it does say here somewhere, couldn't match expected type, char to list char to t, which is the type of cons with well, who knows? Anyway, they all gave me two errors. Ah, that's better. Couldn't it, that's what it expected to get? Something of type list a one, but instead it got this. So, um, that dollar just allows because I could fix that with brackets, but brackets are ugly. So uh, sometimes it's better to just use the dollar. And what the dollar says is calculate everything that comes after it first. OK, we're going to use that quite a bit. So uh, good. And, and now that you know about sort of parametric types or parameterized types, um, types like map make more sense. You know, it takes a function of type A to B um, and maps that to a function uh, list A to list B. And that's quite cool. That's quite cool. Um, so we've done pattern matching. Oh, so I should mention probably how to pattern match lists. Um, it's kind of how you'd expect. So I could redefine map here, this time not using list comprehension. And I say map of empty is empty. Map of x attached to x's equals, oh, I forgot. Map takes in a function fx joined to map fx's. And um, there we go. That's a perfectly good definition of map. Um, same example as before. Perfect. So let's go back to type definitions. So I, I, I said you kind of think about what something is when you define the type. It's a bit like in... Um, it's a bit like when you're doing um, object-oriented programming, where you define types in terms of their functions. Um, you kind of call this in Haskell adverb-oriented programming. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, let's think of a good example. So let's encapsulate error handling. So we're going to make a type.
called um, error, and it'll be of type A. And it equals, is error a good name? Because it's kind of, it doesn't matter. And it's either going to error, or it was OK, and we passed the A. So this is this is interesting. Um, what can we do with this type? So let's make a safe divide function. Safe divide function. So what this is going to take in is this is going to map error int to error int to error int. And essentially, if we divide by 0 at any point, we will error. And if we don't divide by 0 at any point, it will be OK of the answer. So safe divide. First of all, we need to check. And this is going to be quite clumsy, but I'm going to show you different constructs later on that will allow you to really simplify this. So an error x. Um, no, no, sorry, 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 pattern matching. So, OK, X. Um, no, actually, I will go back to how I did it. So we'll start off with the error terms. So error, if the first thing is errored, we want to return error. So what this underscore does is it means we're just going to completely ignore whatever's there. Um, we're then going to do exactly the same if the second thing has errored instead. Um, cool. But then if neither has errored, OK A, OK B, then we can do um, OK A div B. And you see we're kind of extracting the value of A from there and B from there. So, oh, I forgot a bit of syntax there. Perfect. So we can try and test this out. But first of all, if I just say OK10, it's going to error. It says no instance for show. Basically, Haskell doesn't actually know how to print our type out on the screen. But we can fix that. and next tutorial I'm going to go into what we're doing here but I can say deriving and then show now it knows how to print out our types so there we go okay 10 or error and then we can do safe divide okay 5 okay 2 but if I do 0 oh I can't do okay 0 um, let me say what I'll do is I will go like this. Um, my apologies, I forgot the actual safe bits. <laughs> there we go. Try that again. Error. And if I try and safe divide that by something normal, it's still going to error. I have to make that not error first. So this is kind of a way of doing error handling safely in Haskell instead of getting a horrible exception like the one we got, exception divide by zero. Um, we get a Haskell type back that we can reason about and we can do error handling in the code itself. So I, I think it's quite an elegant way to deal with um, error handling. So we've done pattern matching. We've done sort of thinking about building types. Let's go for this. So there's another type of syntax. Um, so it's quite a clumsy way of making sort of the this it's not a good way so far of making something like a struct in Haskell because I could say okay data person and then a person has a name an ID a date of birth 
Um, I don't know what else. And, and and that's not very clear. And it's not very easy to use because if I wanted to pattern match on it, um, maybe get date of birth, person, and I can ignore the name. I can ignore the ID. And then I take the date of birth and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not very, it's not very clean. It's not really clear what this code is doing. So um, when we want to use data types like structs, um, there's a much nicer syntax. So, and this is called record syntax. So I can go name. Um, ID. There we go. Let's type int, and then this is how I like to align things. Date of birth, and then we close that off. Oops. Perfect. And now, um. If we if we just load this up, if I give you the type of name, it's person to string, so it extracts the name. It sort of generated those extraction functions. Date of birth returns the date of birth. Um, nice. So that's Haskell types and pattern matching in a nutshell. I don't think this one was very long. Next, what we're going to look at next time is we're going to look at type classes. Sort of explain what this deriving show meant. Um, great. Good. Yep. That's all. See you next time.